I'm Greta Whitman, founder of Toothwise. Hey, I'm Emmy Sanders, international speaker, transformational trainer, and lead productivity coach at Inspired Hygiene. We're here today to teach you how to use an integral camera, how to get great images every single time. So join us in the operatory. Come on, let's have fun. This applies for all intraoral cameras and their sheaths. The camera should always be facing down at the ground. And as you notice, there's actually a couple of layers of plastic. So you actually go to the very bottom, push the camera all the way in till you meet resistance, okay? I hold the sheath down with my finger and then I'm going to pull the remaining paper away and now I'm ready to go. So I want to show you a two-handed technique for the intraoral camera. With the left hand, I'm going to fulcrum off the patient's chin with my pinky. That frees up my thumb and index finger for manipulation of the camera to help me inside the mouth. Then that way, I have my right hand free for my capture buttons. Okay, so open for me, please. So as I go to the start on the upper right, all right, I'm going to lean the camera on the lower arch. If necessary, I'm even going to put it into the patient's vestibule, which is very comfortable for the patient, in order to capture the posterior molars. Then I'm going to slowly move around the mouth. I'm literally balancing the camera on the lower arch as we move around. Now, if I want to get a close-up shot, I'm actually going to ask the patient to close down a little bit for me, and then that will allow me to focus my camera a little bit more closely if I need to. Then I'm going to slowly move the camera to the upper left, staying balanced on the lower arch. Again, in order to get 15 and 16 if necessary, I will go out into the vestibule again, which is totally comfortable for the patient. Then we'll pull the camera out, just rotate it over, again fulcrum, use the thumb and index, and now I'm going to balance on the upper arch while I'm actually imaging the lower arch. So we start into the back, slowly move around. When I get to the lower anterior region, I can pull the lip out, keeping the camera balanced against eight and nine, actually ask the patient to close up a little bit, and then that gives me my good images of the lower anteriors. This helps me with diagnosing perio, helps me with crowding for possible ortho, for GERD, maybe some medical conditions, lots of reasons to image the lower anteriors. Then I will again get my fulcrum and then I'll continue for the lower left. I'm sorry, for the lower right. And we're done. So what if you don't have the opportunity to have a computer in your operatory? Most all intraoral cameras today are USB compatible. And the good news is all you need is an inexpensive laptop, install your driver, software, plug in your intraoral camera, and you're ready to go. So again, when I'm taking my images, I wanna make sure I'm using the two-handed technique I'm fulcrumming on the lower chin, placing the camera into position, resting it on the lower arch, snapping the image, and advancing to the next two. One of the things that I also do is swing to the facial. That way I can identify if this patient has any recession. I've got that noted from my perio documentation. Swing back to the lingual. And then I typically will take the premolar shots, both premolars in the same image. Miss um, Leslie does not have but one premolar in that quadrant. Now I'm taking the anterior shot. Sometimes I will use my finger to pull that tissue out, take a picture of the premolar image, the molar image, and again sweep for the facial to see that recession back to the lingual just for some identification purposes. I like to do this because I can see so much better with my camera than I can my own eyes. Now, I've done one through 16. I've pulled the camera out of the mouth. I'm going to rotate that around again using the two-handed technique. And I'm going to start with 
the lower left quadrant. Take my image, pull my molars, then as I get right back here, I'll pull that foot down, take that lower anterior image. And it is my theory that ideally we want to be able to take as many images as we can for our patients because there's no better way to document what a patient has than a picture. So now that you've gotten some really great images, it's important to present them to your patient. You wanna make sure that you always sit your patient up, remove your gloves, remove the patient bib, and remove your mask. Now, I'm ready to speak to my patient about her images. It's important that you know the room design, your room layout, because every operatory is different. If you have a computer behind you, you need to find a way to communicate with your patient so that you're not asking your patient to look behind them. This specific operatory has a monitor right in front of us, so we'll be utilizing that today. So now we're gonna talk about some different topics that go along with the intraoral camera. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about software. Most offices now have practice management software such as EagleSoft, Dentrix, and most of those softwares actually have an imaging component that goes with it, which makes it very simple so you can keep all of your images together, whether it's your intraoral camera images or your x-rays, we can keep them in one place. If you do not have that, Almost all of the intraoral cameras available today offer their own imaging software, which also is very easy to do, and most of them actually have a bridge that will link to your practice management software. What that means, it will actually bring in the patient's information for you so that you do not have to enter the patient each and every time. So one of the things that's super important for your intraoral camera is understanding exactly what to do and what not to do. So one of the things that I have to caution myself is making sure that I never get my cord trapped into a door or roll over it with my operatory chair. And also I use a sheath every time. That helps to keep the camera lens completely sanitary. And you wanna make sure that you do not wipe the lens of the camera with your disinfectants. That's super important Very to remember. When it comes to patient positioning, as you saw in our videos, what we feel is most important is that you're sitting at a 12 o'clock so that the patient is in your lap and you can actually do the whole tour of the mouth from that one position. The only problem is if your monitor is not where you can see it, then that can cause a problem. But in dentistry today, we need to be as ergonomic as we can be. Mm -hmm. So. We need to you need to figure that out, how to make that work in your operatory. And that's something too that you need to consider when you input your intraoral camera into your operatory. Where is your monitor? Where is your computer? Where is your mouse? Because those are all things that are gonna help make your life easier with using the camera. Because the last thing that you want is if you are having to turn every time you take mm -hmm. an image, your camera is gonna move and you're not gonna get clear, crisp images. Yes, and you're gonna go home with a sore neck. So another thing to remember is every time you use your intro oral camera, you wanna make sure you do it systematically the same every single time. So I, I learned this from Greta about 25 years ago actually, I always start in the upper right, go all the way across to the upper left, I flip the camera, go to the lower left, and then all the way back to the lower right. Where this is gonna help you is if you take pictures of your midline, you'll be able to look through your images. If you always start in the same direction, you'll be able to look through your images and know exactly where you are. So if you need to, you can go back and number them. 
That's great advice. I will say some softwares now um, actually offer a yeah. template so you can actually take a full series of images just as you would a full series of x-rays and it will number the images for you. A lot of options. And it's super key that you do all that setup of how to number your system in the very beginning. Once you do that setup, it's done. You don't ever have to worry about it again. Patient presentation is actually the most important piece that we could talk about today. We know that patients' anxiety level already goes up when they are in the dental chair. So we want to reduce that when we start showing them what's going on in their mouth. So we recommend that you sit the patient all the way up, we want to take the bib off, and we want to be either knee to knee, eye to eye, or sitting side by side depending on where your monitor is so that you can go through the images. The one thing you don't want to happen is to have the patient turning their neck, having to look at images while you're talking. You want to be there and literally guide them through the process of seeing their own teeth. The one thing that we wanted to talk about are there are so many different cameras on the market. Mm -hmm. and we just have a couple here today that we think are good quality cameras and it's not really, you know, for us, it's not about which camera you get, it's really about the usage. Um, I actually have the Dexcam 4 HD, which is new, which works directly inside of the Dexus Dex Capture software. So the camera that I have here today is the Acteon. This is the SoPro Care. Acteon North America makes an array of cameras. Um, the SoPro Care and the SoPro Life are my two personal favorites. Again, USB compatible. But I also like that it has the touch sensor technology. And then it also has this docking station. So you could actually have your patient hold that and capture the image for you. Or you can have an assistant to help you. One other camera I'd like to show you is a iris camera by Digidoc. It's just a very good image quality camera. Mm -hmm. here's, the, here's the neat part. All of these cameras are USB, USB and that's what's important. They are plug and play once you have the software installed that you need. Hopefully we've given you some really good tips and tricks today to help you integrate and use your intraoral camera in your office. And if you find that you need some additional support utilizing your intraoral cameras, Greta or myself will be more than happy to come in. We can help you with a customized training to allow you and your team to better implement the intraoral camera in your practice for your patient. Also, we will be glad to speak to your local dental societies, hygiene societies, um, love speaking at dental conventions that are in your area. Mm -hmm. Just reach out to us and we'll be glad to talk to you about it.